Hello, all you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with all you beautiful reflections of the one source consciousness that creates and animates all things. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we are super happy to have you here, and we just ask that you bring an open mind and heart to your listening experience and to be prepared to explore vantage points that I'm convinced will help shift or solidify your current understanding of the ultimate nature of reality. While listening, you'll be exposed to inspiring, empowering, and unifying perspectives that I'm highly confident will yield stellar results in your life if you opt to try them on for size. Also, at Optimistic.tv, we have officially begun releasing the first few episodes of our new late-night-style, consciousness-elevating video variety talk show, Optimistic, which features live visionary art, soul-share interviews, retreat guests here at the Mystic Manor, as well as live musical performances. I'm also super excited to announce that we are currently making plans to release the rest of season one on my personal favorite online streaming service. So stay tuned to optimistic.tv to follow the unfolding development of this exciting optimistic expansion as we'll be posting more info and release dates there soon. And in the meantime, be sure to check out, of course, the first few episodes at optimistic.tv as well. Hello, hello, all you amazing positive heads out there. Today, it is Samantha, and I am stepping in for Erica. We did a little switch swap here for you. And I am currently in the south of Spain. And it's really such a fun story of synchronicities, magic, love, and all of the good things that we like to talk about here on the Positive Head Podcast. And today... I'm going to talk a little bit about the book, The Alchemist, and some of my journey and how it's really paralleled that story. For those of you who have not read the book, The Alchemist by Pablo Coelho, you need to. It is one of the best books in the world. And that's, sorry, that's by Paulo Coelho. It's probably not how you say it right, but still one of the best books in the world. And it's one of the books that has been so monumental in my life and in my journey. And I find all of those parallels. And funny enough, I find myself here in the south of Spain, very close to the town in which the main, the hero, essentially the main character in the book finds himself. And today, as I was thinking about the the town that I'm very close to and that I'll be going to in the next few days, I remembered the lessons and the story of the alchemist, and I wanted to share a little bit with you. Without giving away the plot, if you have not read this book, which again, you need to, is that there's this constant, there's these morals and these lessons and just these threads that interweave throughout the entire story, really teaching us, really uh, just infusing the beautiful lessons of the universe and of the law of attraction and manifestation and how the universe really conspires to support the hero as they as they embark on their journey. And one of the constant themes in The Alchemist is really to pursue your dreams by following what your heart desires. And during the hero's journey in this story, really, he learns to listen to his heart, listen to the language of the universe, which is love and to the heart, and also to follow the language of omens, of signs and symbols, which again, we talk a lot about here on the podcast. And throughout the journey, like any journey, there are obstacles and hurdles that the hero has to encounter and go through and grow through and really about learning these lessons and implementing them and growing from them and seeing the golden lining throughout this journey. There's so many other lessons and morals, but what I, what I really take out of it is each time that there's a a next move in his journey, he's asked to choose, to choose the path of fear or to choose the path of love. And he's fueled by this burning desire, by really his soul's purpose, this this journey that he embarks on, that he knows in his heart he is meant to take, that this is his path, this is his sacred calling in his journey. 
And I find that so inspiring because for me, there's nothing more important than knowing who you are and what you want and why you're here and irreverently going after it, going for it to, to answer the call of your soul's desires and to really fulfill that purpose or even to, to search for it. And so, you know, over the last few days, I've had a really crazy few days where I was, well, first I flew down to the States, which they said online that, that the borders were closed. However, I got in without question and I was in the States for a few days where I finally met my boyfriend in person. We got to unite and hug and all the things for the first time. And it was magic and fireworks and rainbows and butterflies and unicorns and everything beautiful about life. <laughs> and um, after that, we, f we were going to come back to Canada. However, we heard that the self-isolation regulations were very, very strict. And we would have had to stay in my little condo for 14 days without leaving at all. And so that was a sign not to go back. And, you know, one thing led to ne the next and there were signs and symbols and little calls moving us uh, to actually fly to Europe. And there was a lot of fear with that. You know, we, we had to fly into the UK for a day. And then we would have had to wait 24 hours and then fly into Spain and everything was closed and Corona was really intense everywhere. We didn't know if we were going to get in and online it tells you that you can't fly in and there's visa regulations and you have to have residency or a work permit or essential workers and all of this. However, even though all of that was in place and there seemed to be so many obstacles and, you know, challenges and potential rejection and a lot of money and time wasted if, if we took that path, something in our hearts was just calling us and, and saying, you know, go for it. And something told me that the power of our love together and our declaration that we are going back to my partner's home in Spain, where he now lives, that we're just going to do it. So we bought our flights and uh, we ended up, you know, having an amazing time flying business, going to London. We got in without question. Literally, we were so nervous about what it was going to be crossing customs and the border control. And as we were landing into London, England, we hear the flight attendants come on the PA and say, as of today, the English borders customs have allowed uh, several countries to go through the E e-customs and they name off a few countries and Canada was there. So we literally land, walk through, scan our passports and get into the country. No questions asked. It was so easy. It was so easy. We're like, okay, great. Now the next one, a lot of fear, right? Spain was one of the countries the most hit with coronavirus. They were completely closed off. They weren't going to open to anyone except for maybe the EU, but it was still very unsure. So July 1st comes and we had heard that all of the flights were going to be closed from the United States to Spain or to even Europe, you know, on July 1st. So we ended up flying the perfect day two days before we get to the gate in Spain, uh, in England to go to Spain. And the girl checking us in is like, I'm sorry, you, you can't go. You have a Canadian passport and they're, they're closed to, you know, anyone who's not in the EU. And then she calls her superior and she gets the message. Oh, actually they just changed the policy today where they are allowing Canadians in. <laughs> you can go through. And it was just so seamless, so easy to get in. And again, when we get to customs in Spain, they just look at my passport, give me a nod, stamp it. And I go through. Before we continue on with today's episode, I'd like to take a quick moment to tell you about our new sponsor, Noom. I agreed to do this promo spot because I am super impressed with the futuristic and simple process that Noom has implemented to revolutionize diet and wellness. Noom is the unique habit-changing solution that helps users learn to develop a new relationship with food. And it's not a diet. No food is good or bad. As we talk about on the show all the time, it's all about proper balance and having good habits. And Noom just teaches you how to look inside your own mind and make better decisions for yourself. Sounds familiar, right? It's based in psychology, so I'm personally really excited about starting to use it to understand my own thought patterns better. And they make it super easy to do with a minimal commitment of only 10 minutes a day, which is essential for someone like me with so much on my plate 
no pun intended. So if you'd like to take the journey with me and sign up for a trial, head over to noom.com forward slash positive head to start your trial today. That's spelled N-O-O-M.com forward slash positive head. I mean, what do you have to lose except outdated habits and perhaps a few extra pounds by signing up for the trial? Once again, N-O-O-M.com forward slash positive head. And looking back, like I remember manifesting, I remember visualizing, I said, you know, universe, if it's meant to be, let it be with ease and harmony and grace. Let us, you know, let us experience what we're meant to experience and let it be easy and harmonious and graceful. Thank you, universe. Thank you, universe. Thank you, universe. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. And so it was. And and again, thinking back, you know, everything said that we couldn't do it. Everything said that there was so much to fear, that it was ridden with this virus, that the borders were going to be closed, that it was impossible, this and that. And the other thing. But in our hearts, we knew, no, you know, the universe is on our side. And that's a huge uh, theme that comes up in The Alchemist as well, is that when you claim your purpose and your destiny and your desires, and you irreverently leap into the abyss of the unknown, the universe catches you and it guides you and it supports you and it provides you with everything that you need. It's just, it, it's that, that declaration and that reclamation of your heart and your passion and your joy and your love and, and knowing that if it's meant to be, it will be. And the universe truly does conspire to make it happen. And it's not just for the lucky. It's not just for the people that are blessed or it's, it's, this is the law, the, the, the one of the universal laws. This is the way that it works and you get to make it work for you. And I have to say that the power of being in your heart, the power of being led through love and through trust and through the energetics of abundance, there's no stronger force on the planet. And as I got here and I was reflecting on it and tuning into my body, I was tuning into these some old programs that are deeply intertwined into my DNA, into my story into old versions of me through my ancestry and the way that I was brought up. And there's this, there's this program that I'm really working on, on, uh, explanting and implanting new stories, but there's this old story that, that it's just not safe. Like the world is not a safe place. Nothing ever works out. Everything falls apart. Something has to go wrong, you know? And, and I, I hear my dad's voice a lot when, when that story comes up. And I know it's in my digestive system. It's my root chakra. It's this story that's, that's inhibited me, not so much from doing things, but from being able to feel safe while doing them, right? It's like suffering from overthinking and over analysis and over worrying and, and thinking the worst and fearing the worst. And as we know, (laughs) fear is the true, is the real, is the, is the, is the actual virus. And so, you know, working through those fear paradigms and those fear programs has been such a powerful part of this journey. Because when I look back, I've always been safe. Even when th- t- things went wrong or the, when it was hard times, I always made it through. I was always supported. It, you know, it always worked itself out and always for the best, right? All of those challenges, all of those hard times, all of the struggles the lessons in them have been so powerful and so potent and they they've really allowed me to blossom into the human being that I am today and I wouldn't be who I am had I not had those trials and tribulations and had I had those hard lessons and so one of the stories that I'm implanting is that everything is always perfect and everything is always working out for me and life can be easy and harmonious and graceful and peaceful and beautiful and magical and whimsical and wonderful. It really gets to be, and it gets to be when we choose to be and when we choose to believe it and we project that belief onto our experience of reality. And then we get to witness and experience that projection that we put onto reality. And that's us co-creating. That is us being the deliberate co-creators of our reality That is us casting spells and playing magic and alchemizing, right? Taking, taking base reality and alchemizing it, transforming it, transmuting it into gold, into something so 
majorly, massively, amazingly beautiful. And we get to thank ourselves when we claim that journey and when we tune into who we really are and when we align with our heart and the power of love. It's so wonderful to see that that is the true nourishment that that we need as a, as, a, as a collective, as a being, as individuals, as consciousness manifest into physical reality. Like that is where the magic is. That is where the alchemy is. That is where the power is. And so my invitation, my takeaway from this is really allow yourself, invest some time and space and energy to tune into your heart, to tune into what you desire, what you crave, what you think about, what, what you wish for yourself. What is it that you've always dreamt of? What have you hoped for? What have you wanted? For me, I knew that I always wanted a partner that I felt fully aligned with, that I felt fully in love with, who brought out the best in me, where it, tr- it transformed reality. Like a love so powerful and potent that it absolutely shifted and activated my DNA and opened up portals of potential into a new paradigm of of what's possible in relationships. And it was a journey to claim that and to go for it and to really leap into the unknown and to claim it and to release, to release what was not that what was not in alignment with my truth, the true beingness, the true knowingness of my heart. And it took me coming into integrity with myself. Am I doing the things that I know are right for me? Am I with the people that I know are right for me? Am I in the places that I know I'm right for me? Am I eating the foods? Am I doing the exercise? Like, am I being true to myself? And it took radical responsibility and radical honesty to get really real and look my look myself in the mirror and say, am I being the person I want to be? Am I being the person I will be proud of? Am I being the person that my little girl inside of me would have looked up to? Am I irreverently happy? And the answer wasn't yes. And that wasn't an answer that I could, I was satisfied with. That's not an answer that I, I was in de- integrity with. And so Again, by coming into alignment, by coming into truth, by reclaiming, by making massive shifts in my life, I was fully supported by the universe and everything I've wanted manifested and is manifesting and will continue to manifest with ease and harmony and grace because that's how it gets to be. And that's what I want for you as well. And so I'd love to invite you to invite you to take the time and invest the time and the energy and the space to come into to come into your body into your heart into your knowingness to ask yourself without fear without limits without any limitations what do you want what do you crave what does your heart know to be true and then what will it take what will it take for you to go after it irreverently and can you trust that you are supported Can you prove it to yourself? Because when you take that leap, you will be met with the, with that equal force and that equal energy. And that's where the miracles are. So I'd love to know if you feel called to it, you can write it in the Facebook group. You can private message me on Instagram at Samantha underscore Lotus. You can find me on my website and write to me directly at www.samanthalotus.com. I want to know. I want to hear it. I want to know what you're creating, what you're manifesting and, you know, hold it in your, in your mind, anchor it in your heart, tune it into your being, affirm it, claim it, write it down, make a vision board, speak it out loud, share it with the world and it will be yours. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. And so it was. And so it will be. I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of this conversation, for being a part of this community. We love you so dearly. Until next time, positive heads. And if you're feeling the call to come for a week retreat style mystic manner immersion, remember to go now and book your time to speak with me directly about stepping into the optimistic vortex at calendly.com forward slash talk with Brandon while there are still spots left. Otherwise, I look forward to co-creating magic with you at the mystic manor.